Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Holotrak and we are playing Imperator Rome, uh, still on the pre-release version, the release is very very close, just a public service announcement, we're gonna do a community multiplayer game and if you wanna join that, um, it's gonna be on the 27th and 28th, then uh, move over to my Discord, there's an invite link in the description of this video um, and most of my other videos, um, there's a channel on my Discord that is called Imperator uh, community MP, I think, and there's a uh, Google Doc where you can put in your name and the country preferences that you want to play. I would love to have as many of you guys as possible in that MP just so we can play together. I think the really, uh, really, the game comes into its own if you play it with other people, as are uh, as do most Paradox games. I really enjoyed it. I played in the Creators MP uh, with a bunch of other um, content creators. I uh, was playing as Thrace, and that was a ton of fun. And I also learned a lot of things, which uh, are gonna be reflected now in the series. This is the first series that I recorded, and then shortly after the Teutonians. And uh, the Teutonian series has profited more from me learning a bunch of things. So, uh, I wanna address all of those. So, yeah, I overlooked uh, Ergena over here. I've actually been there in real life. Um, so, it's a bit of a shame that I, <laughs> that I overlooked it. It's like a very... Um, a uh, very prominent thing to do if you're like in Athens, you can move over to Egna, take a day off and uh, go there, chill out. Um, right, uh, we have too big an army, that's for, that's for sure, like we have too many heavies. Uh, people have been saying, attritioning yourself to, yourself to death with the heavies. That's very true, these guys have a higher um, attrition weight. I'm still not in agreement, um, people have been saying use more archers and stuff. The heavies give us the biggest um, punch for our manpower. Uh, if I split this army in half, and I just take one of them, we're totally fine here. Look at that. Look at that. We're totally fine. We have no problem whatsoever. Uh, supply limit 16, 27. At least in the civilized world, we can totally fight with uh, armies of that size. So I think that's what we're gonna keep uh, uh, doing like uh, archers in my mind are still a bit of a waste of manpower the thing is yes they will break sooner they take more morale damage um, which means they'll they'll just retreat and then your other units can move in and so that is a way to soften uh, soften your people but um, the uh, infantry will take less morale damage so they just fight longer but they they're gonna do a crap ton of damage to our opponents with all the discipline um, bonuses that we have causing them to get absolutely eviscerated I think this is still um, superior strategy we can definitely try different strategies but uh, for a manpower stuff country like ours we need this what we need though is a stack of light infantry units as a siege stack because the light infantry takes a lot less attrition uh, minus 50% attrition weight, so that's gonna be super super helpful um, For sieges, we just put them there and then park one of our heavy stacks or Heavy and cavalry stacks next to them and reinforce whenever they get attacked. That's gonna be the plan um, Tech wise we're inadvertently already doing decently. I actually want to push this up to 300% research efficiency that we can have I'll definitely try to push that the other thing that I learned that is um kind of a problem for this campaign because we're already gone almost 60 years here is the fact that uh, if you don't have a certain pop in a province present and it isn't already growing then uh, that pop will never grow which means since we don't have a lot of slaves in certain areas um, we'll never grow slaves over here because right? I resettled all those slaves in the beginning that's not good that's not good at all so we definitely want to have slaves growing in all these provinces. Um, so what I'm going to do... Yeah, we have to wait a little bit until we get civic power. Damn it. Yeah, civic power is really becoming our bottleneck. Um, the other thing that I'm already doing here <clears throat> is a cultural assimilation. Because that's really, really important. It's not as important for a small country like ours. But in general, you want to have that on um, until everyone belongs to your culture. We're also going to turn that on in Laconia, though. We actually... Like, I went through this. Yes, it looks like it's all Peloponnesian, but look at this. The capital has a ton of these guys. 
um, that belong to different um, nationalities, mainly slaves, but um, yeah, oh well. And then there are some Achaeans uh, and Aetolians and all that kind of stuff. We want we want a as unified country as possible. Now, conquering wise, I want to conquer all that is blue. Um, previously, I thought maybe I'll just go with like a tall country build, but that really isn't the thing for Sparta. So we're just going to keep conquering. Our target is Macedon. We can't go after Macedon because we have a truce with Phrygia, and apparently that stops me from attacking them. Um, it's a bit annoying, but oh well. Uh, our truce with them will end in 511, so it's not too far off. Um, thinking, actually, we could maybe go for another war against Abria over here. Um, they have a very strong alliance, though. Maybe we should just keep our uh, strength, just keep... Um, Building up some troops and then attack Macedon, and also get all this land from Phrygia. Maybe that's maybe that's going to be good. If we attack these guys, I'm also going to pull the Seleucids. Yeah, I'm not too afraid of them. They haven't really done all that well. Phrygia has actually conquered into them, so that's that's interesting. Yeah, so we we got to do we got to do a little bit of resettlement. Um, let me just check my ideas real quick here. So we have the reinforcement and this. We should actually be able to um, pull some of the others. Where's our discipline boost? Yeah, martial advantage is greater than 12. Okay, so we've got to wait a little bit, I guess. Um, to counter Frigia, we definitely have to push the um, uh, our fleet a little bit further. And yeah, we're having some money problems. What we could do is we're not using the plus one trade routes in most areas. So maybe I'll just... Uh, take this away we get 15% efficiency yeah see that gives us two bucks we're no longer importing horses to Laconia uh, I don't think that's really a problem we can just build them from other from other places so we'll go with just two flanking we'll attempt to place uh, two units on the flanks and here it's gonna be the same uh, we want some siege stacks so that's gotta happen I'll go and recruit some light infantry here. Um, ah, uh, so maybe go for twelve. Yeah, and then the question is, what else do we do? War elephants? Yeah, we can't. <laughs> we'll give these. We'll give these guys um, some horses as well, so they can. So they can siege a little bit better and be and have at least a uh, flanking unit. Could even give them some archers. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, in terms of generals, I mean, most of these generals are going to be decently happy. I think I took the the right thing here with the military administration plus zero uh, five um, monthly. There's a bunch of other laws that we could actually push through that might well be worth it. Um, for example. Well, not really the divinity statute, but there is one that uh, provincial loyalty. No, although that is also worth it. Where is it? Professional army somewhere? Don't we have that? Land tithe uh, exemption for nobility might maybe be nice. I will. We could counteract that. Um, over here, professional generals. It increases the wage, but it also boosts their loyalty by quite a bit. Yes, we lose that manpower bonus. Um, but having loyal characters is definitely going to be a big boon to our country. So we should probably try to get that done. Okay, so this is going to be our siege deck. Going to move those to Nopactus. And yeah, this is going to cut into our manpower for sure. Um, right, so let's go ahead and go cultural simulation. So currently we have a max of 148. I just want to see how much that does. Ah, uh, 4k. That's alright. That's alright. That's not a lot of uh, monthly gain. This guy... Hmm, yeah... Not sure what to do about him. He's not going to get his loyalty back. He's a pretender, so that definitely doesn't help. Uh, he's also a popular successor. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, right. I gotta. I gotta um, move some of my slaves. So we'll move one to Cathayon. We'll move one to. Yeah. I would really like to export the iron here from these slaves. So. Might be worth more than all the grain that we have in our capital. 
And we'll just export them away from, from here. So, Kafanta needs a slave. Uh, we'll move one to Mason. And then we can still move one to Messina. I did not know about this, but I mean, it makes sense if you think about it, right? You need to have the specific pop in there. So this is gonna be the siege deck. Um, thinking about giving these guys some light infantry, just to make sure that uh, they have a bit of a defense here. We can still organize these guys in a phalanx. Hmm. So, we're gonna make these guys the primary cohorts. They're not gonna really have much choice about it. Uh, I mean, the archers will kind of avoid losses by fleeing, but they still get slaughtered. So, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Stratocratic monarchy is gonna keep his loyalty up a little bit. Or the other thing that we could do is just, like, pay some. Uh, increased wages. It's just about possible with what we have right now. Nally. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I think we could just keep keep it like that. Maybe. Get the loyalty up of people. Uh, I mean, we don't really need to give this a general until we're done. Maybe we'll keep the amount of uh, units as it is. Maybe this doesn't need a, a whole stack with it. So yeah, supply limit is fine now. That's fine too. I think supply limit might be my future mode for war. Although fortifications is also important. I think we have too many fortifications, uh, fortifications that's for sure. Um, like, we don't really need fortresses on the Peloponnesian island anymore. Uh, fine there. I don't think Olympia needs one. Seen it doesn't need one. We keep one in Sparta just because it's our capital. But we now control Megara as well as Corinth, um, which will allow me to get rid of the fortification here. Up here, this I kind of expect to become a war zone, so we'll, we'll keep him up there. And yeah, that's a, that's about it. That's that's how I want to play it. So that'll free up some money. Ah, okay, yeah, that gives us three additional bucks. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Moving up. I guess we can still keep the maintenance a little bit lower. Why Why is the other guy standing here? Are you, are you trying to attrition me or what? Trade wins. Province of Epirus gains plus 50% commerce income. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so we probably want to import something here. Um, I'm liking cloth. Are you already producing cloth? No, you're not. So that gives us like plus fifty percent tax, uh, plus ten percent tax. We'll get it from from Egypt, sure. Um, and over here, yeah, we're out of civic points now. Okay, the Epistrategos died from overwork. I mean, it's not amazing. <laughs> we seem to run out of characters. So if I if I like take Macedon. I'm definitely going to take all their families into my country. So that we have uh, an additional pool. I'm expecting this to be fixed in the release version, but it seems that uh, families aren't really all that good in terms of... In, in terms of making sure that they procreate, which is a bit weird. Uh, look at our families. Yeah. A bunch of these families are not very, very big, right? Okay, disagreement on the highest level. We can either side with this guy. Current 90. Stop bickering. I want to become more popular, sure. That's not a bad idea. So the siege deck, why are you... Sorry, could you stop attritioning the stack? would very much appreciate it. Is he able to, to get these guys into his army? Go away. <laughs> what is your problem? What is your problem? We could probably build some roads. Maybe from Sparta to our Macedonian border. 
I kind of want to save my military power. That's another thing that I learned. The minimum amount of military tradition that you have to pay for a thing is 400. So we can actually just um, lean back for a little while and see our see our tech go up and then unlock a bunch of traditions at the same time because it has been cheapened by the tech. I um, really do want to upgrade this so Basilois actually reduces this by a bit. If we could manage to import precious metals, yeah citizen promotion cost goes down by 10% I really would like to have that we cannot have any more trade routes. What are we what are we importing into this? I don't really feel like we're already importing precious metals. Let's get rid of the grain. Pop growth is nice, but let's get the precious metal. And yeah, let's get this from these guys. Okay. Now it's even cheaper to promote some freemen to, to citizens. I don't really want to do that. Although there's also a law for that. Maybe we should pass the law. Um, where is it? Over here. Relax citizenship status. Citizen promotion cost minus 50%. We should probably go with that first. So just lean back a little bit. Yeah, that still gave us like 6% additional efficiency. That's nice. Research is good. I'm actually also thinking about like, like pushing the research even further here. We're gonna lose the manpower boost, I think, though. No, we didn't have the manpower boost. That's interesting. What do we go with? Pop growth? Loyalty boost? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what we had previously. I mean, we could also use more money. So I could definitely just boost the commerce income. By another 26%. I'm kind of liking the population growth. Just growing naturally is definitely helpful. We have 888 pops. Oh yeah, and speaking of that, I'm going to make sure that more slave pops grow. So we're going to need uh, to move one into Lepreon. Uh, where are we? Lepreon. Olympia has a slave. Elis does not have a slave. Move to Elis. This place has a slave, so all the provinces in Laconia have them. Now, the question is for this. Yeah, we don't have slaves over here either. Ah, we have some over here though, so we move one to Megalopolis. We're gonna move one to Mantinea. Argos has one. Stymphalos doesn't have one, so move you to Stymphalos. This place does have one. You don't, so move one from Patry to Aegean. Corinth has four. These guys have one. Okay, we're gonna move one to Troizen then. Where are we? Troizen, over here. Argus. Okay, so every city over here has one. You probably don't need to micro this if you have like a huge country. But if you have a smaller one, you definitely want to make sure that you have the proper pops in every area. So we'll move one into Stratos. I think that is the one that we actually um, civilized here. Um, also, wanna well, that's kind of expensive moving these. We might just move one more of those and free them then. Move into Terranian. These guys don't have any. These guys do though. So move you into Ambrachia. Come on, give me Ambrachia. These guys have some slaves. Nicopolis doesn't have any slaves, so move you to Nicopolis. Right. These guys need one. Where is it? Dodona over here. Yeah, oh, and then we still have tribesmen. That's also interesting. It's gonna be a bigger problem to do something like this on Crete because our the range to Crete is kind of difficult, but at least we share a sea zone with Crete via Cathera, so we can actually do something like that. We can also move this guy to Polyrinia. 
move this to Tara. Eluthana is fine. Knossos doesn't have any. Because otherwise, we're just starving ourselves to death, right? Here, there's one growing. I guess I already moved them before that happened. So they were already growing. Move into Gutinia. Okay, so now we... I mean, we could just wait until they are more grown. I could also just move three over. I mean... You have one. You can move one to Polarinia. And then move you to Herapna, I guess. Move to Herapna. Now we're just m missing two. So maybe we'll just do it from Sparta. Uh, move to Kathira. Move to Kathira. It is a bit of a... It is a bit of a micro thing. But I think it's going to pay off in the long run. Uh, so I'm going to move one to Lictos over here. And one to... Razos. Right, so now each of these provinces has them growing. On the other hand, what we really don't want is tribesmen growing. Because just as... Uh, just as there will be no slaves growing if we don't have them any uh, there. If we have tribesmen in there, there will also be tribesmen growing, as you can see over here. And we don't, really don't want tribesmen because they, they're kind of unhappy in a civilization like ours. So... We want to improve them to freemen and just have it be that way. Uh, how much oratory? Uh, we're not gaining a lot of oratory power. People have been saying I should maybe cheat at the Olympics. Um, I think that's going to be kind of difficult. <laughs> Cheating at the Olympics, it's not that easy. Although the Greeks did it. Like, they actually, they tried their damnest. <laughs> just because it was such a prestigious thing. Okay, the citizens are euphoric in Achaia. Uh, patriotic citizens in Aegean are ecstatic at our benevolent rule. Okay, sure. I'm I'm fine with that. Benevolent rule for the win. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. there are barbarians up here. How did you have barbarians over there? How did that happen? Oh, this is so barbarian area. Interesting. And there over as well. You can basically what you what you gotta do is um, you boost the civilization value of certain. Um, mountain areas if they're completely within your country they'll actually go up and once the civilization value is at a certain level um it'll stop the barbarians from spawning because the uptick from this being a barbarian stronghold which is 0.6 actually gets reduced like you can see that over here civilization value is already reducing this by 0.01 and still upticking with 0 0.06, so yeah. Not amazing, but it's alright. I wish I could make this guy loyal. Maybe he could just die? I think his health isn't all that great. No, his health is 100%. Damn it! Could smear his reputation. He's already vastly unpopular. I don't really want to pay the points for this. I don't I don't see that being a good move. Right, what we want to do though is we want to get rid of this tribesman. No more tribesmen on this island. We don't want we don't want tribesmen to grow. That's not a good thing for us. That's tribesmen and another one growing. Okay, we've got to think about getting some more slaves into these provinces. So Tyrone could use one, and then I mean we also take one in war. Uh, we take um, slaves in wars. So that's probably fine. Over here, we actually have... Ooh, we have a bunch of slaves in Aetolia. That's interesting. Okay, this place doesn't have any. Move to Kaleon. This place doesn't have any. What's that? Orchomenos. Move to Orchomenos. Over here. Damia. Could maybe move one to... Opus. Right. That's that. Yeah, I really don't get why this guy is always following our siege stack. I mean, I guess he can. He might still even be useful in a war. I don't know. Oh, it's June 1511 now, so maybe we'll just go ahead and attack Macedon now. No! 
Although Cabalino's Pantorca is responsible for the oversight of civic works, it has become abundantly clear that his appointment was a terrible mistake. All around the country, shabby, hideous edifices are being raised at alarming speed. Sadly, his latest masterpiece collapsed, killing a number of civic officials. We should decide how to handle this. Yeah. Oh, have him flogged. Have him flogged. He needed it. Right, so we have no general on this army. Bring you over here. Bring these guys over here. We're gonna bring our army maintenance up now. And uh, the fort maintenance too. Since we don't want them to break through our forts. We're paying their high wages, which means... Yeah, another oratory thing. Which means the loyalty of people will go up quite a bit. These armies should still be able to beat most of what these guys can bring into the field. I just want Macedon. I want to take Macedon if I can. Oh, I could convert 200 bucks into 25 oratory power. I don't think that's really worth it. I think what we need is more marketplaces. Especially at home. Let's maybe invest half of that money. We have 37,000 manpower now. These guys have 11,000. I have no doubt that we should be able to um, deal with them now. I mean, Frigga is still a bit of a problem. Um, but they're still in a civil war. So I doubt that they're going to be able to impact the situation much. We can go for an invention. Yes, siege engineers. Or heavy infantry costs. Uh, a lot of these are really great. That's the monthly loyalty plus one. Monthly war exhaustion is also super good. But yeah, we're gonna go take siege engineers. Just to make the sieges take as short as possible. So these guys are allied with free gear now. They're guaranteed by the Seleucids. Um, Bactria is gonna join them as well. Holy hell. <laughs> and they have both free gear and the free gear revolt as their allies. That's just weird. Okay, well, we're gonna go down in speed here. We'll, we're gonna declare on them. They need it. They want it. So, show superiority is the, is the thing. Yeah, let, let, let the Seleucids be the war leader. Okay, we'll just use our siege stack here. So, the siege stack could use a, a commander. This guy is kind of a horrible commander. Really need. Ah, he's a foreign citizen. It's the head of the Prezo and Lucanid family. Okay, we gotta we gotta maybe just give a couple of people citizenship. Characters. Sold by Marshall. Can I make women into generals? The wife of the Admiral of the First North can I don't think I can. I think I need to change a law. Yeah, our women are actually better fighters than our men. <laughs> okay, yeah. I have citizenship status. I can also friend him. I don't think we want to do that right now, but we'll give him this cohort. Okay. And then someone needs to take this cohort. Who would be the next best commander? Gallon Helidit. Why is he not eligible for command? Yeah, he's also a foreign citizen. Oh yeah, the low navy maintenance. We should probably deal with that in some form or fashion, because we have to fight free here. Uh, we have an unused import route in our capital. I can do nothing about that right now. But let's go and naturalize another character here. This guy is a researcher. This guy's a general now. What about you? Admiral of the First Nauticon. Researcher, Epistrategos. Archigromateos. This guy's got cancer. He's a friend of the party leader. Where's our guy? Here's our ruler. Researcher. Where's the dude? Um, yeah, I guess we're gonna just search males for this case. 
This guy is too young, he's just eight years old. Over here, Galon. Grand Sanderson ship status. Hope you'll be loyal to me. You're gonna take the siege stack. Yeah, Galon. Make me proud. Phalanx. Phalanx. Yeah, these guys already inherit the, the thing. So that's good. Maybe we should actually give our king a couple more heavies than the other dude. But I think it's fine. I think this is fine. We really don't want to be too brutal here. I definitely want to take Thessaly and maybe even Macedon if I can. The problem is with an OCB war, it's kind of a bit more difficult to... Um, get a lot of war score. Yeah, we still have the supply limit over here, so we're not taking undue attrition. Okay, no slaves from the siege. We'll keep these guys here to reinforce the siege of Tricker. These guys have finally built a fortress uh, close to their border. I guess you've got to salute them for that. Hmm. Well, until we siege this down, there's nothing much we can do. Oh, they've already... They've already murked up. Oh, they're just now building troops for this. I guess I could maybe build two additional heavies. And for this one as well. One, two. That should be fine. It'll, it'll make me feel a little bit better here, though. The sieging is probably going to take a while. Uh, they don't have a full garrison, though, for some reason. So they must have run on... Uh, they must have run on low... On low maintenance. On low fort maintenance. <laughs> that's kind of hilarious. So we're down to 331. Uh, let's hope that the marketplaces actually do something for us here. Get another slave pop in Sparta, which is fine. Okay, so from 331 to... 316. Ah, that's not a lot for the investment that we took. Okay. Okay, so these guys should just join their armies. Yeah, it's looking fine. It's looking good. What is my ass? What are my ass stats? Oh no, that man is horrible. Zero, zero, five, seven. Why? Why do you even exist? Maybe I should give it to a pretender. You're bad. Acrotatus is just horrible. The problem is I can't have my air killed, I don't think, so... I guess our country is just gonna endure someone who really isn't fit to rule. It's the old problem of a monarchy. If you have a good ruler, you're in good shape, but if you don't, you're hosed. Okay, someone wants olives from Laconia. We have an influential family, more province loyalty, I'll take it for sure, why not? So we'll, we'll attack those 10k. Okay, we took this fort now. Awesome. Uh, we really need to rush into this though, come on. Yep. So that works out for us. Just taking taking bigger armies. I still maintain that the that the heavy the heavy strat is working out. Tactical genius. Okay, so this guy is a prodigy now. After success in a number of battles, Erastotinus Lyconid has begun to display exceptional ability in the field. Is there anyone who can stop him? Awesome. I like it. I like it. You did well, my boy. Uh, I'll keep you here in Larissa. Actually, no, we keep the we keep the king here. Why have you march out? Uh, there were actually comments saying, like, your army can't fight uh, well if you have force march on. That's not true. Just um, higher weight, I guess, is a bit of a problem. We'll have these guys march out, and we'll have these guys stop with this. 
so we don't attrition ourselves to death, but um, they can fight just as well with this. Uh, okay, there's not much to do for the siege deck right now, but I have to end the episode in any case, so next time we'll continue our fight against Macedon. I doubt that I'm going to be able to sack Rome before um, the release. We could have it as a long-term goal. Rome is actually not doing too well in this one. They're doing really well in the Teutonia game. Uh, I guess it depends a little bit on if they find themselves on the receiving end of uh, a couple of big alliances or something. Um, we'll see. Generally, they should be able to expand because they get a lot of claims and stuff. So they're just able to move forward really, really well. Well, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you join me for the next episode. And please think about joining the community MP. Thanks. Bye-bye.